Thank you, Holy Spirit. Magnify your name. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Hallelujah. I want us to pray and thank God for our lives. Father, thank you. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank him for the privilege of life. Thank him for the privilege of access. Thank him for the privilege of proximity to grace. Thank him for favor. Thank him for your family. Thank him for your children. Thank God. Just lift up your voice and thank the Lord. Father, we thank you. David said, if it had not been the Lord on our side, the enemy could have swallowed us with our eyes open. If it has not been the Lord on our side, the enemy could have swallowed us with our eyes open. If it had not been the Lord on our side, we thank you. On this word in season and counter broadcast, we thank you. There is none to be compared unto thee. We worship you. We magnify your name. We give you glory. We exalt your majesty. We announce your potency, mightiness to the universe. We declare you are God. Beside thee there is none. Beneath thee there is none. Above thee there is none. Father, we worship you. Take all the glory. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The Lord bless all of you for connecting once again. This is your host, Richmond Dwarfa, on Wise Encounter Broadcast. The Wise Broadcast. Wise is simply Word in Season Encounter. Word in Season Encounter Broadcast. So this is Wise Broadcast. We come your way every Monday, 12.30, right on this dial. This is the church without walls. Hallelujah. Um, we had some few technical challenges uh, a few weeks back, so it has been resolved now. So most people got in touch with me, and we have to now refer them to our YouTube messages where we went deep into doctrinal issues to help the growth of our Christian, Christian life. Hallelujah. The last encounter we had had to do with the caption, Behold, I do a new thing and um, we establish the fact that the Lord has interest in doing new things, especially with our lives as believers. Hallelujah. And um, we read some few scriptures and um, we did um, Ezekiel chapter 36 from verse 26. Um, and then we establish the fact that anytime God wants to do a new thing, Ezekiel chapter 36 from verse 26. Message Bible said, I will give you a new heart. I will give you a new heart and I will put a new spirit within you. And I will take out your stony heart, stubborn heart, and give you a tender, responsive heart. Wow. Verse 27. It says that, and I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my status. And you shall keep my judgments and do them. The will to do. Verse 28. It says, And you shall dwell in the land that I will give to you, fathers, and you shall be my people, and I will be your God. So you see the transition. I will put my a new spirit within you, give you a new heart, and you will do my will. And then finally said, and you now dwell in the land I will give you. So we establish that the behold, I will do a new thing. It's beyond God giving you a land and a car before Christmas or giving you a new husband and a new baby before the end of the year. Those are marvelous testimonies and we pray for them along the line. But when they come to the realm of God, when God is saying, behold, I will do a new thing. That word behold, we will visit it before the close of the program this afternoon. I will do a new thing. He is looking at configuring your spirit man. So we said the new thing that God normally does begin from number one, the spirit of the man in question. Are we on the same page? If a man is not born again, if a man is not groomed with the word of God, if a man doesn't have any relationship with God, that man is a secular and a worldly person. Anything kingdom you put in the hand of such a person is tantamount to disaster. Hallelujah. So the new things of God always and 
always begin in the spirit of man. So the man is not born again. God is not looking at giving him money. He is looking at changing his spirit man. Are we on the same page? So the first project of behold, I will do a new thing, happens in the spirit of the man in question. Hallelujah. Then we, 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 we transited to number two, the soul of the person. That when a man is saved, it is not the end. The soul of the person is an amalgamation of the reasoning faculty of the person in question. The, the will of the person in question. So the next project God is interested in embarking on when it comes to implementing new things and new projects is project soul. The soul has the will to do. The soul is a faculty between the spirit and the body. So when this soul is impacted by God's will and God's idea and God's project and divine configuration, then now it now exerts God's influence on the body to carry out. So the second project God embarked on, upon when it comes to new thing is the soul. So the spirit number one, the soul number two. And I'm saying the soul doesn't get configured by an accident. God now begins to feed the soul which comprises of the mind and our reasoning faculty with the word of God. Are we on the same page? Be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind. So when the soul is now configured with the word of God, the soul can now please God. There are people who are born again, have a, a renewed spirit, but the project to go through the discipline of the soul have not been accomplished. So we live a dual life because the project is not done. We shift straight from the spirit to our lustful desires. And when it comes to God, there is a methodical approach to the growth of man. So behold, I will do a new thing. Begins with the spirit, begin with the soul, then begin now transit to the seed of the man in question. You know, God was telling them that now you can now dwell in the land, in Ezekiel 36 verse 27, the land that I have given you. The land now represents the seed of the man. So the seed here talks about every project that will come from you. It can be your academia, it can be a land, it can be a housing project, it can be a church you are starting. Because if until the spirit is one with God, and the soul is one with God, the seed will be frustrated. So God begins his project from the spirit to the soul, now to the seed. Now he knows that when he makes me a millionaire, the money will not be spent in the club or upon frivolous activities. Why? Because my spirit is new, my mind has been configured, so now my seed can help in expansion of the kingdom of God. This is what I will do a new thing means. When God is dealing with man, he is seeing how the man can and be beneficial to him in the course of his work with the man. Hannah knew this in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 1. When he went to God for a project, God had to take her through a lot of processes. And finally, when um, he stood, she went to the temple and Eli prophesied that, woman, your desires have been accomplished. Now, the bargain between Hannah and God was that when you give me this seed, I will hand him over to you. Yes, so that is the project. I will hand it over to you. So any man that has been configured in the spirit and soul, that man will not struggle with God in handing over whatever benefit that came out of the relationship he established with God. So behold, I will do a new thing. It has to begin from the spirit to the soul, then to the seed of the person in question. I keep saying this humorously that if you give money to someone who is not born again, does not understand the ways of God, it is a recipe for disaster because the project will be self, 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 and not in kingdom. Hallelujah. So we are continuing today. Behold, I will do a new thing. There is a posture to take before this new thing can manifest. Hallelujah. We have gone through the God's idea in doing new things, uh, which is spirit, soul, and the seed. When the spirit and the soul are in sync, with God's ideology and project. This body you see, this body, this clay sustained by the breath of God, this body is just an executioner of the intentions of God. Are we on the same page? This body is a slave to the realm of the spirit. So when the soul and the spirit are in sync with God's idea and God's project, the body becomes an executioner of God's original intent. Are we on the same page? Yes. I feel like praying for someone. I stretch forth my hands towards you. That any project from hell 
that has found expression in your body and in your soul. The power of the Holy Ghost will flash it out right now in the name of Jesus. The power of the Holy Ghost will flash it out right now in the name of Jesus. Whether it is a thought of immorality or sickness and diseases that has plagued your body for no reasonable reason. By the mercy of God, we extend the healing power of God unto you right now. Whether you are in the hospital, in the house, things have gone haywire yet. We extend the mercy of God to you. The power of God flash out every foreign material in your body right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So now, uh, behold, I will do a new thing. Uh, what posture are we supposed to take before the manifestation of this new thing? That is the question we should ask ourselves. Hallelujah. Because God does not work in a vacuum. What am I supposed to do as a believer? What am I supposed to do as a human being in order to be a benefit? factor of what God want to do in my life. Number one, let's go to Isaiah chapter 43 from verse 18. Father, thank you. O kapada bahasti. Ma kash kalabran dis kefeni. Isaiah chapter 43 from verse 18. For I am about to do, okay, forget the former things. Do not dwell in the past. This is very straight. The first thing that a man must do in order to, to, to sustain the capacity to benefit from this new thing God is about to do is number one, forget about the past. You see, Bible extended that do not dwell in the past. Now, this forget about the past in the King James, says, remember not the former things. The first pillar to help you um, receive from God, this new project God is about to embark upon, is that forget about the past or the former things. This past includes the past failures and the past victories. Now, if God is saying forget, he's not saying that forget everything and just move on. No, there are things you must look back upon and thank God for. For example, in 2014, you may have been involved in an accident and the Lord delivered you. God is not saying forget about that because you have to remember that and give him thanks. When David was in the temple, he hung his cloth in the path in the palace and then once in a while he looked on it and said lord i thank you for delivering me from the bears and the lion and appreciate the kinship that the lord has bestowed upon him so forgetting about the past is not ignoring everything god has done and and, and just proceed without saying thank you Thank you. There are 10 lepers the Lord healed in the Bible. One person remembered the good deeds of God and came back to Jesus and said, thank you. Jesus asked him a question. He said, I healed 10 people. Where is the remaining nine? That means mm, in life, God uh, expects that we look back and thank him. Uh, thanking God and praising him and honoring him for what he has done for us in the past is not a, a moment of weakness. Is a, it means wisdom. Hallelujah. So forget about the past. God is saying that you must be able to forget the past failures. Ignore the past victories. Yes, you can remember the victories and thank me, but don't dwell there. Don't dwell there. In 1998, I finished secondary school. I topped the whole village. That is fine. But proceed because we are not in 98. There are people doing masters at the age of 23. People finish PhD by 24. Why not focus on that than, than predicating your victory in the past? You can look on that victory and thank God that when I finished, people died. People failed. But here I am. There may not be a job now, but Father, I thank you. That is different. He is saying that don't dwell in the past. Don't dwell in the past. You can remember the past and thank God, but don't remember the past and dwell there. Hallelujah. You can write that down. You can remember the past and thank God, but don't remember the past and dwell there. There is more in God. Even in heaven, he said, come up here. So there is a need for man to ignore every defeat in the past. The past failures, the past backsliding, the past compromises, and focus and gaze your eye like a flint until you achieve what you see in God. Are we on the same page? Yes. Forget about the past. This was the same thing adumbrated in the Bible. 
when God was destroying Sodom and Gomorrah, there was a warning to Lot and entire household that don't look back. Remember not the former things. Then Lot's wife remembered that there are properties and gold bars in her back. And then she, she ignored the voice of God and turned back to look at the things she has left. And immediately, Bible record that she turned into a pillar of salt. Why? Because someone decided to disobey God. When God said, remember not the past, it means remember not the past. There is no Greek or Hebrew connotation to this. Obedience is obedience. Are we on the same page? Yes. Pastor Richmond, 1999, my parents died. I sympathize with you. But David said that, though my parents may forsake me, but the Lord will hold me up. That means I can lose my parents and I sympathize with you, but there are more parents in the body of Christ that can withhold you up if God speaks to them so that we can live the best part of our life pleasing God. There are people that are still living in the past and God cannot do anything with them. Why? They are refusing to detect Touch themselves from the past. In the past, you, you sinned. In the past, you backslided. In the past, you completed school. So we predicate our mind and emotions to the past and we cannot detach to withhold for what God is doing. The, the past can be a distraction or a springboard to help us catch up higher. Hallelujah. Remember the past, but don't dwell there. Hallelujah. Yes. So the first key in... Uh, beholding the new thing God is about to bring is that forget about the past. Remember not the former things. We have to find a way not to remember the former things. You cannot say 1992, you were typing on the typewriter and then you have to, use, no, no, no. Now there is, there is, there, there, there are, there are sophisticated laptops. There are sophisticated artificial intelligence uh, uh, inventions and all that. You just type a word and they, they now, they configure the system in a way to reflect your thoughts. So you can't dwell in the past. Man must search on. Man must search on. Hallelujah. There are, there are side effects to remembering the past and dwelling there. Number one, it can keep you comfortable. Imagine you are 90 in a class and you top the whole class in the year 2000. And we are in 2023. Everybody you top, they are PhD students today or PhD holders today. Or they are CEOs of multinational companies today. Then you, you now hold on to that certificate and say, this CEO was my mate. I, uh, during those days we were in school, I was the highest, he was the last. That's what we are talking about now. Now he is employed people, you are unemployed. So holding on to the past can keep you comfortable in failure. Hallelujah. There is a reason God is warning us. Africa, there is a, a reason God is warning us. Forget about the past and let's proceed. There is more. There is more. There is more. There is more. It can keep you comfortable in failure. In the past, I fasted for seven days. No food, no water. Congratulations. But what are you doing now? Because there is something in the Bible called the present truth. That means there is what God did before. But there is what God is doing now. And we must catch up with the Spirit. Are we on the same page? Yes. Secondly, Psalm 51 from verse 17. Let's proceed. 51 verse 17. So the posture for beholding the new thing is that remember not the former things or forget about the past. Hallelujah. Psalm 51 from verse 17. Find a way and list every destructive interjections in your life and make sure they don't intercept what God is doing. Satan is a master of this sense realm. He can, he can see you progressing and all of a sudden give you a flashback of something you did when you were, you were a child or in your past only to distract you from catching up with those ahead of you. Satan has files. Satan has archives. Satan has the data of your past. This guy is a master of reminding you of the things you are trying to forget. If you don't master courage and partner with the spirit of God to forget the past, there will be a lot of distractions. Are we on the same page? Satan can keep some of your friends in the past alive only to distract your call in the future. You must find a way to forget about the past and move on. In the past, people were moving here and there to get projects accomplished. Today, uh, just a, 
a, a press of a button and ai too will get all your project accomplished there there, there is a, there is a, 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 a there is growth in our civilization we have gone far from the past there is a need for you to sit up and catch up hallelujah in the past you can say you are reading two chapters of the bible a day but the kind of attacks we are in now that kind of strategy will not work are we on the same page because when the bible was written there was no fibroid. When the Bible was written, our divorce rate wasn't this high. When the Bible was written, unemployment was not up to this level. So that should tell you that there is an increase in the civilization of the dark world. So to capitalize on your strategy of knowing God in the past to now, it's a total disaster. You must be able to sit down and take the Bible and say in the next three weeks, I will finish the Bible so that when God is talking to me, even from the book of Philemon, I can understand what he is saying. We have to find a way to catch up with time. To catch up with time. Bible said the adversary, the devil is roaming around, seeking whom to devour because his time is short. Even Satan is working with limited time. We Christians cannot sit down in the comfort of our past and, and seeking uh, momentary succor. Hallelujah. Yes. We have to catch up. So in the past, we were praying 30 minutes a, a day and that was okay to help your spiritual hurt. But it can't be now today. Now you have children, you have wife, you have a job, you have friends. Some are fake, some are real. 30 minutes prayer cannot secure you from that far. So there must be systems put in place to ensure that we catch up with time. Satan have agent program on earth all over because he has projects he must accomplish in time. So we cannot capitalize on the past systems and strategies to, 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 to live the kind of Christian life we envisage ourselves living. Hallelujah. Psalm 51 verse 17, the sacrifices of God are a broken heart, a broken heart and a contrite heart. Oh God, you will not despise. Hallelujah. The second posture to take to behold the new thing is to sustain a contrite and a broken spirit. Bible said the sacrifices of God are a broken heart. Do you know what that means? In the Old Testament, we have burnt offering. We have sin offering. We have all sorts of offering. Yearly offering. We have all sorts of offering that must be, must be given before a man is sanctified. But in our time, Bible is saying that the moment a man has a contrite heart, a broken spirit, that man must not give all those offerings again. Because the broken spirit is a summary of all the offerings we have read about in the Old Testament. Oh, this is good news. That means the moment I become malleable, humble, and teachable, God can do something new with me. This is good news. This is good news. The moment pride goes and leaves my life, and I sustain a humble spirit and a contrite heart, I become a candidate of a new thing in the arm of God. The, this thing is not about age. If you don't know, you don't know. Number one, the posture to take to sustain and behold the new thing is that you must remember not the former things. You must forget about the past. And number two, the, a contrite heart or a broken spirit. You must sustain a contrite heart and a broken spirit before you can be able to attain the height of the new thing God is about to do. God does not do new thing consulting past data. He may choose to do that based on his sovereignty. But if he's saying he's doing something new, it is practically new. Read your Bible. Read your Bible. Read your Bible. He said what? He is about to do a new thing. The heart has not even conceived it. Neither has he entered the heart of man. What God has in stock for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. Are you understand? No heart has perceived it. It has not even been known to the mind of man. So when God is about to embark on a project, he needs a contrite heart. He needs a broken spirit. He doesn't need someone who already have an experience in how God does his things. When he called Moses in the burning bush, the first thing Moses did is to remove his slippers and approach the bush. In other words, Daddy, I, have, I was trained in Egypt. I was supposed to be the next pharaoh. I know everything about sorcery, but this voice is new. I have laid back all the knowledge I've acquired in Egypt by taking, taking off my slippers. Father, teach me. This is the kind of people God wants to work with. You may not be perfect, but you have to be sincere that you don't know anything. Paul told us that if any man thinketh he knoweth something, let him know that he knoweth not as though as how he is supposed to know. That means we don't know anything. No matter how you know, you still don't know. Hallelujah. In, in the realm of God, we, 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 there is always more. 
there is always more. We must be humble. We must sustain a contrite heart and a broken spirit to be able to catch up with the things God wants to do. Hallelujah. Mm. Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If God cannot correct you, you are already gone. Yeah. You cannot be a project in his hands. He said, I am the clay, you are the potter, contrite heart, broken spirit, that I might decrease so that he might increase, contrite heart, a broken spirit. Are we on the same page? God should be able to attempt to do anything with you at any time. Irrespective of academic accolades, irrespective of your ministry experiences, God should be able to come to you on trivial matters. God should be able to come to you on serious matters. Why? Because we remain slaves in his hand. Hallelujah. Yes. Contrite heart and a broken spirit. Where you sustain a virgin heart to accommodate any project God will bring. God can tell you, you have a church in Accra. I'm sending you to the voter region. Go and remain there for the remaining uh, years of your life. And the, the answer is yes, sir. Why? A broken spirit. God can tell you the money in your account, 70% should go into missionary work. And the answer is yes, sir. Not it is my money. Not God. I, do you know? Are you aware of the economic crunch? No. That's not what we are talking about. The moment you sustain a contrite heart and a broken spirit, that means everything concerning you is his. He can choose to do anything he wants to do with it. And that is our prayer. That at the end of this broadcast, the Lord will do with us anything he chooses to. Because he said, I know the plans I have for you. They are plans of good and not evil. They are plans to bring you to an expected end. God's plan for me is better than my plan for myself. So I can trust God and hand over my life to him and watch him beautify my life at the end. Yes, in the process, there may be issues. In the process, there may be attacks. In the process, people may vilify you. In the process, you can be, you can be, you, you can be forgotten. But at the end, it is glory. It is glory. Hallelujah. God's plan for me is better and higher than my own plan for myself. It's a, it's, a, it's a wisest statement anybody who wants to work with God can make. Look at you. Look at how you trust yourself. Look at the kind of mistake we have made. Just trusting ourselves. Just trusting ourselves. Look at the kind of mistake. Look at the kind of disgrace. The kind of shame we have brought upon ourselves in the name of I know myself. Yes. A man who is wise and wants to go far with God must learn to hand over his heart to God. His heart to God, a broken spirit and a contrite heart, the Lord will not despise. Wives must learn to hand over their hearts to God. Husbands must learn to hand over their wives to God. Our children must learn to hand over their heart to God. Look at what de the devil is doing to our children right now. Are you on the same page? Yes. A broken and a contrite spirit. Who can know it? Hallelujah. The same scripture... Isaiah chapter 43 from verse 20 to 22. Hallelujah. Father, thank you. Isaiah chapter 43 from verse, well, from 18. Say you have already opened the 18, so let's keep going. We'll read from verse 20. So the first posture to take to behold the new thing, number one, is that you forget about the past, remember not the past, and number two, you, you sustain a contrite and a broken spirit. Number three, look at God. Look at how God is telling them. Verse 20, he said, The beast of the field shall honor me. Don't forget that statement. The dragon and the oaths, because I give waters in the wilderness. So the dragons and the beasts of the field are honoring God because he gives waters in the wilderness. That means even these beasts have been able to acknowledge the mightiness and the doings of God. And they honor God. And see the rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen people. Verse 21. These people have I formed for myself. They shall show forth my praise. 22. I will combine these points. Yet you have not called on me. In other words, you have not honored me, O Jacob. But you have become weary of me, O Israel. Do you know what that means? That means irrespective of the demonstration of my mightiness, I miss you. The beast of the field has honored me. 
the oaths have honored me, but you, Israel, you have not honored me. How do I do a new thing in your life if I am dishonored in your life? In other words, even if I pay your school fees in JSS and now you are in university, you cannot pay your fees. Remember that I did that in JSS. Take advantage of that and praise me and honor me. Are we on the same page? Yes. So the third key in sustaining and beholding the new thing God is about to bring is what I call Anna. 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 In other words, reverential fear, acknowledging the mightiness and the handiwork of God in the life of a people. In the life of a people. In the life of a people. That means the same accident I had and didn't die. Somebody had one eight of that accident and lost their life i should look at that act of god and say lord thank you it is an a communication of honor that i don't take your provision for granted many africans are walking in anger and bitterness because god gave them a job in 2020 and they lost the job in 2022 they have stopped church in other words god you cannot sustain me look at that kind of carelessness we have forgotten there is no database there is no written document that is holding the things of god in trust there is no written code to look to and thank God for what he has done. So God may tell you, remember not the former things, but it does not mean that don't look at the past and ignore me. You can't ignore God. He is the one who brought us here. When he took the people through the Red Sea, through the wilderness, they have to write it down. They have to write it down to present it to their children. So God did not say that, just ignore everything I did for you in the past. No, he is saying, don't dwell there because I can do more. Anna is a language understood by even men. How much more God? In the book of Malachi, God asks a question. Can you give the dead ghost to your governess? Can you give this blind ghost to your governess? How then do you give me these things? Where is my Anna as a father? So a Christian that wants to sustain the ability to work with God and benefit from the new thing God is bringing must always honor God as a lifestyle. Pastor Richmond, I'm not married. I'm aging. That's not, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm saying that even to be alive, honor God for that kind of life because a dead body cannot accept a marital proposal. Are we on the same page? Yes. My exposure to rural evangelism have made me appreciate the kind of life we live in this city. Are we, are, are, are we here? Yes. Yes. You will see life that are practically under reproach, death, damp, broke, all in one person. You come to a cry, you have not eaten. God is in trouble. No, we must find a way and honor God. Honor God. We must find a way and honor God. Honor God with our lives. Honor God with our hearts. Honor God in our marriages. Honor God with our finances. Honor God. Just find a way to honor God. That is what I'm talking about. So you can pick your certificate and say, Lord, thank you. I finished HND. I finished diploma. I am done with my degree. There is no job. But Lord, I am a graduate. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I honor you with this certificate. Father, breathe upon them. Take all the honor. Take all the honor. It only took you to finish the school. Most of my mates are dead. Most of them are mad. Most of them have been buried. But I am alive with my certificate still here. Lord, I thank you. Do this and see God command angels to come to your rescue. God is king. He is sovereign. He is not at anybody's beck and call. But when you pick these keys and you implement them, he is sure to intervene in your life. He is a father. That means he is a, he is a, he is, he is a provider and a sustainer. Hallelujah. Yes. Anna. Everybody obeys God apart from man. I don't know where we got this heart from. The mountains obey God. The rivers obey God. The sea obey God. When the lions obey God. The stars obey God. When it is night, the sun is gone. The moon comes. All these guys obey God. But man can wake up one day with just first degree in chemistry and say there is no God. If there is God, why did these people die? If there is God, why, uh, why am I... Uh, uh, where, where is he? He should show forth himself. Why? Because he has a first degree in chemistry. A man who was sleeping in church in Ghana entered abroad and came back and said, I am an atheist. Look at that. He wants to see God, yet you, you, you cannot see bacteria, but you believe they can give you sickness. You cannot see atom, but you know they exist. You cannot see elements, but you know they exist. The gamma rays, you don't know God placed them there to, 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 to regulate our system. God must be honored. A child can wake up today and say there is no God. Science have taught us that. Then, 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 then. And you, you look at that. You just, I tell people, don't even read the Bible. Read history. And see the wonders of God in the life of the living. Read history. Basic science 
radioactivity will teach you that there are radio waves, there are television waves, and then the highest is the gamma rays. And the gamma rays is emitted from the sun. Basic science will teach you that the reason why the sun is not burning the earth is because of uh, evaporation and other kind of scientific interventions. So that means somebody is holding the sun from scouching the earth. This one should tell you that beyond the gamma rays is the realm of the spirit where no eyes can see apart from a conk relationship with God. The ozone layer and the evaporation is sort of sustain the sun. From, God doesn't need two minutes to, to, to destroy the earth. Just take the shield off. Take the pillars off and we are all gone. Are we on the same page? Yes. So there is a need to honor God. We must be able to look at our children and say, you may not be able, you may not be in school, but I thank God for giving you me. We must begin to honor God. Honor God indeed. Honor God indeed. That's what I'm talking about. Father, thank you. A man that lives in dishonor should forget about God doing any new thing in their lives. It is not done. God is not our mate. He is kin. He is kin. Father, thank you. Parosh kede fran dis kede bahaita. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's continue the reading. Isaiah chapter forty-three, from verse twenty-eight. Single. Yes. You have not called upon me, O Jacob, but you have become weary of me, O Israel. Okay. So um, let's go to verse nineteen. The same scripture. So number one talks about forget about the former things or ignore the past. Number two, contrite heart. And number three, honoring God. Number four, is for I'm about to do a new thing. See, I've already begun. Do you not see it? The word see it there is the word perception. Do you not perceive it? Do you not perceive it? Do you not perceive it? I will make a pathway. In other words, the fourth I item on the list is be conscious of the mightiness of God. Be, be, be Develop some sort of perception about God. Do you not see it? Do you not perceive it? And one of the ways to perceive the mightiness of God is to behold his word in the word of God. In the word of God. That means I may not be working for about seven years at home, but one job God can give me can cover my many years of suffering. I may even forget that I've been unemployed before. Why? Because God is mighty. The fourth key to beholding the mightiness of God is a consciousness of the mightiness of God. The consciousness of the mightiness of God. We must have a perception that God is mighty. He is not our mate. God is mighty. Mary was not in bed with a man before Jesus was giving birth to. The Holy Ghost practically deposited the baby in the womb of Mary. That is a mighty God. When he met the Israelites, he didn't call the contractors and the masons and the steel benders to come and build a bridge on the Red Sea. Just a, a strike of Moses' rod parted the sea. That is a mighty God. So if God can pass the Red Sea, God can make a way in my life. This perception keeps you going. That because of this, I will not steal. Because of this, I will not sin. Because of this, I will not cheat. The consciousness of the mightiness of God help us from cutting corners in order to be relevant in life. We must be conscious that God is mighty. Pastor Richmond, I am aging. I am not marrying. Come on now. Isaiah chapter 34 verse 16. Bible says, And none shall miss her mate. That means if the time is right and I really want to settle down, God can drag the man from anywhere he is and I will meet my mate and ensure my wedding is consummated. Pastor Richmond, I am sick in my body. I'm, I'm sorry I sympathize with you. But there was a man in the Bible called Job. Job was sick. His entire body was eating up. And the woman that he told, the woman that told him that for better, for worse, met Job in the morning and said, my family members are disturbing me. Curse God and die. And Job said, no, no. God has kept me to this day. Why speak like one of the foolish women? And Bible said in the book of Job chapter 42 verse 10, that when Job prayed, God turned around his captivity and gave him double for his trouble. If God can heal Job, God can heal me. God is mighty. The perception of the mightiness of God is what keeps up going in the affairs of life. That there was a young man called Joseph. Joseph was sold by his own brothers for 
petty shakers. That means my brothers can give up on me. That means my friends can snitch me. That means people I grew up with can, can, can do things to me, but God can pick me up. And the young guy Joseph was sold to slavery, went to prison, went to the pit, and all of a sudden became a prime minister. If God can lift Joseph, God can lift me. A man must have perception of the mightiness of God whilst walking through it. If you don't have this, you will compromise many times in your life. This is how the patriarchs of old live their life. This is how the patriarchs of old live their life. This is how they live their life. But people can meet people on the way, and the guy is the guy is broken in, in leg. And Paul and Silas, he said, Look on us. Silver and gold I have none. What I have, I give you. They knew that they have something to give the cripple man. The guy bounced back on his feet. Why? They have a consciousness that God can heal. All the village could say we have gone. My team will tell you there have been sporadic demonstration of God mightiness beyond our imagination. We we were like ah. So if we are sat home waiting for the souls to come, how would these miracles happen? We have seen goiter disappear. We have seen strange people appear from strange corners that want to be a member of this church. We have seen epileptic people patients bounce back to life we have seen thousands of people gathered to give their life to jesus we have seen oppression taken away from people and i say no 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 this can only be the mighty hand of god before a man can sustain the grace to withhold and behold the new thing god wants to do that man must be conscious of the mightiness of god that he is not your mate he is not your lecturer he does not depend on your past to lift you god can lift you god can make you God can change your story. Papa Adeboe gave in Nigeria, gave a testimony regarding a young man in London. The young man was belonging to the other religion and became a Christian. And all of a sudden was dejected by his family. And this young man got a job in a restaurant. He was trying to make sure ends meet, but ends were not meeting because the salary was quite meager. It was nothing to write home about. And the guy can speak their language. Now, a very huge al Haji came to the restaurant and he wanted to buy a house in London, but he does not understand the language, the uh, English language, he only understand Arabic. And then he met the young man. And the young man said, how does he speak Arabic? And he said, yes, they spoke in Arabic. And he said he want an interpreter because he want to buy a house in London. And the young man said, I can interpret you. And the Alaji said the young man should quit his job and then follow him because he's going to pay him. And the young man said, no, I came to London to make sure ends meet. I can't quit my job. I I'm just going to interpret you. How much will you pay me? And the Alaji said, I will pay you one million pounds every day for seven days he didn't quit he left the job that is a miracle god in one day has changed the life of this young man i believe god can change a life i walk every day with the consciousness that god can change my life it's a perception nobody can change it he can change your life beyond your certificate he can change your life beyond your situation god is a changer of life it, it is his specialty how then are we going to live a victorious christian life if you are going to live every day Putting the X and the Y together. Making sure one plus one is two. No. Perception. The ability to conceive the mightiness of God. That the doctor can tell me. This sickness cannot go. And I, I acknowledge and I thank him for his years of studying in the medical school. And turn back to God and say, God, you are the creator of men. These people can only manage our cells and our organs. But God, you can replace every damaged organ. And God looked from heaven and said, in pain, you can tell me this immediately. There is a switch of organs. I believe God can do this. And I pray for a family watching me. Any yoke of darkness that has placed you in obscurity by the power of light, let that yoke disappear now in the name of Jesus. Let that yoke disappear now in the name of Jesus. Any delay that has become a mockery on your life, the Lord caused a supernatural intervention in your life. That delay is terminated now. That delay is terminated now. That delay is terminated now. In the mighty name of Jesus, they say in that family nobody rises because demons have written a code, a code on that family and everybody that go to school don't even get a job. When the time you do for marriage, the man ran away. In the name of Jesus, that siege upon that family is broken now. The siege upon that family is broken now. In the mighty name of Jesus, God can change lives. Father, thank you. Ola mash kapra das kabaha. 
Zada da da dush para kadifra hasta. Melek redos kofadi barash. Mandi di bidi kabush. Keteke de branda tai. Father, thank you. God can change lives. So a man that wants to behold God doing new things, that man must forget about the past. Number one, you must not dwell in the past. You must not dwell in the past. The past, I know somebody disappointed you. A boy broke your heart. A lady broke your heart. Fine. Sorry. We have all been through that. I mess up. I compromise. It is gone. What should we do? We must say, John. Number two, a contrite heart. You must have a malleable spirit. God should be able to get your attention anytime. Number three, Anna, honoring God in every circumstances. And finally, be conscious of the mightiness of God in your life. Be conscious of the mightiness of God in your life. Father, we thank you. You have listened to me. You have been encouraged. You believe that this is your word. The reason we sit here every Monday to propagate the gospel is because lives must be saved. The civilization of the kingdom must become real in lives, institutions, and all the spheres of human endeavor. A life with Jesus matters. Matters. You must be born again. When Jesus encountered Nicodemus, he didn't say you may be born again. He said you must be born again. As a say, we are Christian. As a self for Abraham, my Jesus. As a say, obey now. He must come and live within you. You say, Pastor Richmond, I want to be born again and give my life to Christ. You are welcome. This is why we are here. I want you to pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I have heard your word. I believe this word is for me. I have repented of my sins and backslidings. Deliver me from sin. Deliver me from evil. Lord Jesus, I receive you this afternoon as my Lord and my personal Savior. Come into my life. Be my Lord and my personal Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. This is Wedding Season Encounter Broadcast. We come your way every Monday at 12 30, right on this dial. I want you to join a Bible believing church and grow your faith. If you need help, we can help you with a Bible reading plan that can assist you read the Bible six chapters a day, 12 chapters a day. If you want to finish the Bible in three months, there's already a plan we have. We can help you grow your faith. If you refuse to study God's word, let me, let me tell you what will happen to you. Number one, when situations come into your life, you will respond by emotions. Yes, to Christ to etch from what they be also be 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 sour trust or see for at the end account or be power soon right at any left. It's a strategy he's teaching them. The word of God teaches you to live at peace with all men. If you don't want to respond with emotions and be at the disadvantageous edge of life, we must be ardent students of the word of God. And we can give you a plan to study God's word, we can give you a plan. To study God's word in three months, in six months. I don't even encourage the one year because the one year is normal. I want us to put pressure on ourselves and finish the Bible at least twice in a year so that we can mentor those generations that are coming. You can go into the comment section and send us a hi. We'll forward the plans to you and then monitor the progression of your spiritual growth. Hallelujah. Then number two, you need an accountability partner. You cannot stand alone. What God is doing is a convergence, not a divergence. You may not be able to stand alone. The kind of assault from hell, the, the agenda of the kingdom of God is a convergence. That's why the Bible says, Our Father, not my Father, who art in heaven. The prayer was our, our, our. Yes, Christ was born in the book of John 17. Or see that they may be one. So find an accountability partner that you can be accountable to. Whether you are strong or weak, they must know and pray with you. Hallelujah. And find a Bible believing church that will help your, your faith grow. Your life will not be the same. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. I will see you next week, same time. Bless you.